Hey guys, this is April, and today we're going to talk about realism. But before we talk about the art, let's first talk about the culture. So right now, the art world is centered in Paris. Paris is the biggest city in Europe at this time point. And a lot of changes are happening in this city. First off, one of the big things that's going on in Paris is you have multiple revolutions. So you have a revolution in 1830 and then another one in 1848. And then you have the laboring class, those in poverty, rising up on the June Day uprisings. So there's a lot of unrest during this time period. This is also the same time period in which the Communist Manifesto is being written and sent out across Europe. One other thing that happens out of all of this conflict is you have Napoleon III come into power. So Napoleon III, this guy is basically Napoleon Bonaparte's nephew. And being a Napoleon, he decides to make himself emperor of France. So that is going on as well. Now, Napoleon III decides to make some changes in Paris. He basically gives the city a facelift. So he tears down slums, makes bigger boulevards, makes beautiful buildings, really improves the standard of living in Paris. Now, one thing that he does that made people unhappy is he decided to make Paris bigger. So basically, he decided to include the suburbs outside of Paris as part of Paris, and you have all of these people now having to pay higher taxes. Another thing going on is Paris is now having railroads built. People can travel more freely back and forth from Paris to more rural areas. So we're going to see that in the artwork. So artists are going to paint their rural hometowns or rural landscapes and then bring them to Paris to exhibit. Now many artists from around the world are bringing their work to Paris to the official salon shows which are overseen by the academy so they can be exhibited. You have artists from Russia and even America trying to get their work into this official show because right now Paris is the center of the art world. And if you were to get into the show, that's great publicity. And if you win an award, that leads to commissions. So let's now talk about the art of realism. The artist at the forefront of this movement is Courbet. Courbet is not interested in romanticism. He's not interested in these overly dramatic scenes or these exotic scenes. He becomes inspired by Dutch genre painting from the Renaissance and Baroque time period and decides rather than painting something that no one of this time period has ever seen, he wants to paint scenes of everyday life. One thing that you'll see many of these artists focus on, just like Corbet, is the laboring class, the poor, people that do very hard manual labor. There is definitely a social message in many of these pieces, basically trying to make people aware of the plight of the poor in their country. One thing that artists are going to do during this time is go out of their way to make their paintings unideal. So they might have ugly colors, they might have awkward compositions, they might have grotesque figures, or they might apply the paint in a very brash way. The grittiness of these paintings not only helped with relaying the social message, but also implied that the artist was almost as if they were right there in front of the scene, painting it directly, like doing this quick sketch with paint. As far as subject matter, the, mainly the rule had to be it was something of everyday life. This couldn't be a history painting. This couldn't be something in Africa. This had to be something that was contemporary and happening and something that you could observe. So this could be rural workers. This could be prostitutes. These could be religious processions, burials, anything that actually did happen. 
We also see artists experimenting with compositions and just content and paintings as well. So you might have artists that go out of their way to make uncomfortable, jarring compositions like Mayonnaise Lunch on the Grass. Or you have artists like Whistler that basically implies he's making art for art's sake. So his compositions of just based off a of color harmony. This is a revolutionary idea. Now when you look at realist artists, you're going to notice that some artists went further than others when it comes to rebelling against academic standards. When it comes to academic painting, it's basically like neoclassical art. Very accurate figures, very beautiful colors, very comfortable compositions, history subject matter or mythological subject matter. Now some realists were more safe far as how they painted their scenes. Millet would be a good example, or Breton would be a good example. Even though they're doing scenes of poverty and of peasants, unlike Corbet's work or Manet's paintings, Millet and Breton are doing very appealing paintings. They're using colors that are not as grotesque. They are more idealizing their forms. The compositions are more appealing and easier to approach. And the lighting is a major factor as well. The lighting creates a sense of power. When it came to the reception of these paintings, it was mixed. You had people that loved this work and then people that hated this work. Work. So both positive and negative criticism. Or as negative criticism, there are many things that people criticize about these paintings. From the size, to the content, to how it was painted. For example, people, when it came to the burial at Ornans by Corn Bay, people complained about the size. They felt it was too big for a genre painting. People also complained about how it was painted. They felt it was too ugly. You also had people complain about how it showed the rural bourgeoisie, the rural upper class. You also had people complaining about the fact that it showed the lower class. People of upper class were uncomfortable of depictions of lower class because of the fact that they had been revolting quite a bit. They felt concerned that they might be overthrown and lose their status. People were even uncomfortable around Mie's The Gleaners. People felt it was too big and were uncomfortable with the subject matter. And it's actually less than four feet wide at its biggest dimension. It's not a huge painting. So this was a very uncomfortable subject during this time period for people. Now even though these artists received very negative feedback with their work, these artists were still successful. For example, Corbet won a gold medal at the Salon show with his painting After Dinner at Ornans. Napoleon III even offered Corbet the Legion of Honor, the highest merit award you can receive, which he rejected because he was not a fan of Napoleon. You also had Mie, who won awards as well, medals in the Salon, and was even invited to be a juror for the Salon. So even though there was a lot of negative criticism, they still were very successful successful in the end. Now that said, these artists still faced rejection. This led to a couple of the artists doing something that we haven't seen before though. Both Manet and Corbet went off and had their own solo exhibition in a commercial gallery. This idea of abandoning the salon and having your own show became popular when it came to the Impressionists. As time went on, the jurors for the salon became more and more conservative, so more and more artists stopped exhibiting at the salon. So that's all I have for realism. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below.